there he goes again. The dim light of dawn filters through the tattered curtains of the small living room. Lucas Oliveira is sitting at the kitchen table, his eyes heavy with sleep and worry. He watches as Joaquim Oliveira, his father, quietly grabs his coat and prepares to leave the house. The air is thick with tension and unspoken pain. Joaquim opens the door, pausing briefly as if sensing Lucas's gaze. He doesn't turn around. Lucas's heart aches as he sees his father walk away, disappearing into the morning mist. Lucas calls out to his father with a shaky voice. Father, where are you going? Joaquin stops but doesn't turn back. He speaks over his shoulder, his voice indifferent. I'm just going to work, Lucas. I'll be back later. Lucas clenches his fists, frustration and sadness boiling inside him. Work. Is that all you're going to say? What about us? What about mom? Joaquin finally turns, irritation flashing across his face. Your mother will be fine. She's a grown woman. Besides, I have my own life now. With that, Joaquin walks away, leaving Lucas standing on the sidewalk feeling helpless and alone. Lucas watches as his father boards a taxi and disappears into the horizon. He returns to the house, closes the door slowly, turning back to the kitchen where his mother, Bella Oliveira, is sitting at the table, staring blankly at a half-empty bag of chips in front of her. Okay. Bella doesn't respond at first. She just keeps reaching into the bag, mindlessly munching on the chips. Lucas watches her, heartbroken as he realizes how she's coping with the pain. Ma, you don't have to do this. Eating won't fix the hurt. Bella finally looks up at him, her eyes glazed over, filled with a mix of sorrow and despair. I'm fine, Lucas. Just hungry. What do you care? You're not the one who's left behind. Lucas moves closer, sitting across from her, trying to connect. I care because I love you. I hate seeing you suffer like this. This isn't the way to deal with it. Bella grabs another handful of chips, her hands trembling slightly. What do you suggest I do? Just wait for him to come back. Just sit here and pretend everything is fine. I know it's hard, but you can't keep living like this. Binge eating won't bring him back or make you feel better. It just makes you feel worse. Bella glances down at the bag of chips, feeling a wave of shame and anger rise within her. She grabs a large tub of ice cream and begins eating it in large spoonfuls. Lucas watches her, worried if he'll ever be able to fix things. The thought crosses his mind, what if his mother starts turning to alcohol or other substances to escape her pain? Determined, he resolves to help her find healthier ways to cope with suffering before it's too late. From his research, he's learned that consistent exercise, meditation, counseling, adopting a positive mindset, reading uplifting books, attending church or Christian events, and prayer can all make a difference. I don't know how to stop, Lucas. He was my husband, and now, now I have nothing. I feel so lost. You have me, Mama. You have Helena. We're still here, and we need you. God is our provider, not Joachim. We can find a way to heal together. But how do I let go of him? How do I forget the life I thought we had? It's not about forgetting, it's about moving forward. We need to find a new life without him. It's not going to be easy, but we can do it together with the Lord's help. You really think we can make it without him? I believe we can, but we have to be strong and face the pain, not hide from it. 
let's focus on rebuilding our lives. We'll find a way, I promise. Bella takes a deep breath, finally letting some of the pain surface. She reaches out and takes Lucas's hand, a small sign of acceptance. I'll try, Lucas. I don't want to live like this anymore. Lucas squeezes her hand, a faint smile breaking through the heaviness of the moment. That's all I ask, Ma. One step at a time. There's a service at our church tonight, where the pastor will be speaking about how God can use suffering to redirect our paths and the importance of turning to him, rather than seeking comfort in worldly things, during difficult times. I'd love for you and Helena to join me. The setting is a well-kept home in a quiet suburban neighborhood. The atmosphere is tense as Katarina Pinta, Joachim's girlfriend, stands with her arms crossed, her brow furrowed in frustration. Joachim walks in, looking disheveled, as he tries to collect himself. Where have you been, Joachim? You disappeared for the whole weekend. I was worried sick. I told you I went to visit my mother. I had some things to sort out. Visit your mother, or were you with another woman? I hope it's not Bella, your ex-wife. Are you seriously still tied to her? Look, it's not like that. Bella, she's just, she's taking care of the kids. Joaquim shifts uncomfortably, knowing he can't reveal the truth about his indecision regarding the divorce. Taking care of the kids, or taking care of you. You know I can't wait for this divorce to be finalized. I want a fresh start, without any baggage. Joaquim lowers his gaze, his mind racing as he thinks about how to respond without causing more conflict. I understand, but the church and the elders said it contradicts everything we believe in. As a result, Belladonna refused to sign the divorce papers, and I haven't been able to make any progress with her. That's why I still haven't filed for divorce from Bella. Katarina's expression changes from anger to disappointment as she steps closer, trying to understand. So you're just going to stay in limbo forever. You need to make a choice, Joachim. It's either me or her. You can't keep living like this. Joaquim runs a hand through his hair, feeling trapped between two worlds. I'm trying, Katarina, but Bella, she depends on me, and those kids. Your old life is holding you back. I have my own kids to worry about. Five children from my previous relationships. I can't keep waiting for you to figure this out. Joaquim looks pained, a mix of guilt and anger bubbling beneath the surface. You think it's easy for me? I'm not just some deadbeat. I have responsibilities, and you're not making this any easier. Responsibilities? What about your responsibilities to me? To us? You keep secrets, Joachim. Secrets that make me question everything. Joachim clenches his jaw, his frustration mounting as he feels cornered. I know. I know I'm not perfect. But what do you want me to say? I'm just trying to cope with everything. Sometimes I, I escape with gambling, with drinking, because I don't know how else to handle it. Katarina softens slightly, sensing his vulnerability. Then talk to me. Don't push me away. You know I care about you, but I can't be in this limbo. I won't raise my kids in a house filled with secrets. Joaquim runs his hands over his face, overwhelmed. I want to be with you, Katarina, but I also can't just walk away from my past. It's complicated. We can work through this together, but you have to let go of the guilt. You need to decide if you want to stay tied to Bella and your old life, or if you want to build something new with me. Joaquin looks into her eyes, feeling the weight of her words. He hesitates, caught in a storm of emotions. I just don't know if I can let go yet. I'm trying to find a way to balance everything, but it feels impossible. Take your time, but don't take too long. Life is passing us by, Joachim. You need to choose before it's too late. Joachim nods, his heart heavy with the weight of his decisions, as he gazes out the window, lost in thought. I need to think. Sermon, The Dangers of Avoiding Suffering with God Preached by Apostle Paulo Romans 5, 3-4
3 to 5 KJV reads, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Beloved, today I come before you with a message that cuts to the core of our human nature and our spiritual walk with God. We are living in a time when many of us, knowingly or unknowingly, are running from the very suffering that God can use to shape us, refine us, and draw us closer to Him. I want to talk about something crucial today, how we often avoid suffering with God and instead, turn to things that will only deepen our pain and distance us from His grace. Let me remind you, church, that in John 16:33, Jesus said, In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Trouble is a certainty, suffering will come. But how we handle it determines whether we grow closer to God or further away from Him. 1. Substance abuse, seeking numbness over healing. Some of us, instead of waiting on God for healing, turn to alcohol or drugs. We say, I just want to numb the pain. But listen to me, substances may numb you for a moment, but they leave you bound in chains of addiction. This path doesn't heal, it destroys. Scripture says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5.18. When you allow substances to control you, you miss out on the peace that only the Holy Spirit can provide. 2. Promiscuity and unhealthy relationships. Many are seeking comfort in the wrong arms. You're lonely, you're hurt, and instead of seeking God's comfort, you're chasing affection in promiscuous relationships, thinking this will fill the void. But let me tell you something, that void is God-sized. No human being can fill it. Scripture tells us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit 1 Corinthians 6 19-20. When you engage in promiscuity, you are defiling the temple of God. You are running away from His healing embrace and toward deeper heartbreak. 3. Materialism and consumerism. Filling the void with things. Oh, how we love our possessions. We believe that more money, a bigger house, or the latest gadgets will bring us joy and peace. But Jesus warns us, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Mark 8:36. Materialism is a trap. It deceives us into thinking that we can purchase happiness, but all we are doing is running from the true fulfillment that comes from knowing Christ. 4. Gambling and risky ventures. Some of you have turned to gambling, hoping for quick financial success. You say, if I just hit the jackpot, all my problems will go away. But church, let me tell you, that pursuit will lead you into deeper problems. Proverbs 13.11 says, Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Gambling is not a solution, it's a destruction disguised as hope. 5. New Age Spirituality in the Occult Beloved, be careful when you turn to astrology, tarot cards, crystals, or any form of New Age spirituality. These practices are dangerous because they open doors to spiritual darkness. God is clear in His Word. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. Leviticus 19.31 When we run from God and seek quick answers in the occult, we are inviting spiritual oppression into our lives. 6. Power and control, manipulating others to avoid suffering. Some of you are avoiding your pain by trying to control others. You manipulate, you dominate, because deep down, you are afraid of feeling powerless. But true power belongs to God. Proverbs 16:18 tells us, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Trying to control others only leads to further distance from the humility and surrender that God requires of us. In my next sermon, I will cover the remaining six points. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information at once. All I ask is that you reflect on what I've shared today and pray about it. A few days later, at Lucas's school, the classroom is buzzing with students talking and laughing. Lucas, looking nervous, sits at his desk, surrounded by classmates who seem to be celebrating their exam results. A large notice board at the front displays the results. The teacher, Mr. Santos, stands beside the board, looking proud. All right, everyone, the exam results are posted. Take a look and see how you did. The students rush to the board, excitement in the air. Lucas hesitates, fidgeting with his hands, glancing around at the jubilant faces. His anxiety builds as he finally stands up and walks towards the board, his heart pounding. Lucas reaches the board and scans the names frantically, his eyes darting across the results. 
He finally finds his name and reads the marks. His face falls. Lucas muttering to himself. Come on, Lucas. Just average marks. Just get through this. He steps back, feeling overwhelmed, panic rising in his chest. No, not average. This can't be happening. Students around him celebrate their results, but Lucas feels isolated in his despair. Yes, I made it to university. Woo. Me too. Can you believe it? We're actually going. Lucas's breathing quickens as he realizes he won't be joining them. He turns away from the board, feeling like the walls are closing in on him. He stumbles to a nearby bench and slumps down, his head in his hands. He looks around the classroom, feeling the weight of disappointment and fear. His mind races, thoughts spiraling. What am I going to do now? I can't believe I messed up again. Everyone else is moving forward, and I'm stuck. Just average marks. He takes a deep breath, trying to calm himself, but the anxiety lingers. I work so hard fixing computers, but I can't get this right. Why can't I just excel at academics like everyone else? <laughs> Lucas glances back at the board one last time, his heart heavy. He watches as his classmates share their dreams of university, feeling the sting of rejection. Maybe I'm just not meant for this. Maybe all I can do is fix computers. How can I face my family now? They expected so much. I can't let them down again. I just want to make them proud. I don't want to let mom down. She's always believed in me. But how can I be anything when I barely scraped through high school? Instead of turning to the Lord in prayer for comfort and guidance, Lucas remains trapped in sorrow and self-pity. Rather than seeking solutions, he fixates on his problems, magnifying them, instead of focusing on God's greatness and his power to transform any situation for good for those who love him. Just as praise glorifies God, worry serves the enemy. In fact, worrying is often described as a form of atheism. School hallway, the hallway is bustling with students, laughing and chatting. Lucas stands alone near the lockers, looking dejected. He stares at the ground, lost in his thoughts. One of the school staff members, Mr. Souza, notices him and approaches. Lucas, you look like you've seen a ghost. What's going on? I just, I barely passed high school, Mr. Souza. I don't know what I'm going to do now. It feels like my life is over. My family is doomed. Listen, Lucas, it's not the end of the world. I know it feels heavy right now, but trust me, this is just one chapter of your life. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Way to Destiny. If you haven't already, we invite you to subscribe and become part of our growing community. By liking and sharing our videos, you help spread the message, and we truly appreciate your support in making that possible. As we close this chapter of Lucas's journey, we witness the heart-wrenching struggle faced by each character, a reflection of our own lives and the choices we make in the face of suffering. Joaquim's escapism through gambling and alcohol, Bella's silent suffering and binge eating, and Lucas's overwhelming anxiety each illustrate the human tendency to avoid pain rather than confront it with faith. The sermon by Apostle Paul reminds us that suffering is not a sign of God's abandonment, but a divine invitation to draw closer to him. As he boldly proclaimed, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. It is essential to understand that our pain can be a pathway to growth if we choose to walk it with God. The key lies in our response to our struggles. Lucas, consumed by self-doubt and fear of societal judgment, mirrors many of us who are trapped in the cycle of negative thoughts magnifying our problems instead of focusing on God's promises. Yet, in this turmoil, he receives a glimmer of hope, a reminder from a school staff member that it's not the end of the world. It's a crucial turning point. Even in our darkest moments, we can find the strength to rise above our circumstances through faith. Beloved community, 
let us take these lessons to heart. It's easy to seek comfort in the temporary distractions of this world, but true healing and empowerment come when we choose to face our suffering head-on, relying on God's strength and guidance. Remember, our struggles are not without purpose. They shape us, refine our character, and deepen our relationship with our Creator. In the spirit of Romans 8.28, we hold firm to the truth that God works all things together for good for those who love Him. As we reflect on today's episode, may we be inspired to confront our own suffering, seek God's presence in our trials, and allow Him to transform our pain into something beautiful. Let us go forth, empowered and strengthened, knowing that we are not alone in our struggles. May we uplift one another, embracing both our hardships and triumphs as we walk this journey together in faith. God's grace is sufficient for us, and His power is made perfect in our weakness. Let us choose to lean into Him, trusting that He will guide us to our destiny. Amen. Before we conclude this episode, we would like to share the following verses for you to reflect upon. Please note that they are taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Facing Suffering with Faith John 16.33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Romans 5, 3-4 says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. 1 Peter 5:10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, Establish, strengthen, settle you. The dangers of avoiding pain. Proverbs 13:15 says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Hebrews 12:11 says, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. God's power in our weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And Isaiah 40, 29 says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts, acknowledging the struggles and sufferings we face in this life. We thank you for your word, which reminds us that in this world we will encounter tribulation, but we take heart in knowing that you have overcome the world. John 16:33. Lord, we recognize that our trials are not without purpose. They are opportunities for growth, refinement, and a deeper relationship with you. We ask for your grace to face our suffering with faith, remembering that it is through our weaknesses that your strength is made perfect. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Help us to resist the temptation to escape our pain through unhealthy distractions and to instead seek solace in your presence. May we understand that suffering can yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness, as your word teaches us. Hebrews 12:11. Father, grant us the wisdom to embrace our struggles, knowing that you are working all things together for our good. Romans 8:28. Help us to turn to you in our moments of despair, and remind us that you are near to the brokenhearted, and save those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18 As we face our challenges, strengthen our hearts and uplift our spirits. Help us to cast aside fear and doubt, trusting in your promise that you are with us, holding us up with your righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, 10 May we find hope in our circumstances leaning on your everlasting arms and finding comfort in your unfailing love. Lord, we ask that you empower us to walk in faith and not in fear, to lift our eyes to the hills from whence our help comes. Psalm 121, 1-2 
we declare that our hope is anchored in you, the source of all strength and comfort. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed. Thank you.